Hi, welcome to the Balanced Body Podcast. I'm Lindy Royer, physical therapist, founder of Pacmedis Pilates and Physical Therapy in Lone Tree, Colorado, and Balanced Body faculty member. I'm here with my friend Earl today to demonstrate positioning for mature students when using the reformer and the mat. First, we're going to look at placing Earl supine on the reformer, as he is now, making sure that he's fully supported and able to access neutral position for him so that he can move effectively. First, you can notice that Earl has support. We're just using little bean bags underneath his shoulders. And then we've placed a small pillow and a balanced body head pad directly on the headrest. Let's have a look at Earl's position if we remove all of these supportive devices. So Earl, I'm going to take away the shoulder rests first. So we're just taking away the shoulder support. And then we're going to take away the head pillow. Notice as we take away the head pillow in particular that Earl's head goes into quite a bit of hyperextension. I'm noticing a lot more tension in the front of his neck and his shoulders are more forward, more tension across the anterior part of the shoulder. It's really critical that before we begin to move, we have support through the neck, shoulder girdle, arms, and chest so that there's a minimum amount of tension. If I were to take away the shoulder, the headrest in this position, this would be even more of a severe hyperextension of the neck. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the head pillow back in so that we can see the change in the angle of Earl's head and we're going to put the shoulder rest back in so that Earl has nice support through the back side of the shoulders so that he can allow his chest to open in order to be able to move without tension in the head, neck, and shoulders. Next, we're going to look at positioning on the mat. Here we have Earl lying supine on the mat. And as you can see, the hyperextension in his upper cervical spine is more evident. And also in his lumbar spine, there's more extension. As we age, the head tends to come forward. The thoracic spine tends to become more kyphotic or flexed. And attaining an optimal spine alignment becomes more challenging. If we were to begin moving Earl from this position, he would have difficulty accessing his core and his shoulder girdle. So we're not going to leave him here for very much longer, but Earl, can I just ask you to float your arms up toward the ceiling from this position? So notice there's a, quite a bit of strain in that movement. Lower your arms back down. Now I can tell you that Earl does have some shoulder issues and he is 83 years young. So accessing shoulder movement for Earl for function is very important. So we want to maximize that. Earl, I'm going to put the pad back underneath your head. So here's the balance body pad, and we're already improving. Does that feel better? And then I'm going to add the pillow that we had on the reformer. So I'm just going to float your head up. Uh -huh. And how's that? Now, can you bend your knees up? And by bending the knees, we reduce the anterior tilt on the pelvis. It's going to be much easier for Earl now to balance the pelvis, keeping his lumbar spine in a more neutral position. The last piece that we're going to add here is putting those shoulder pads back underneath. Lovely. How's that? Good. All right. And now can I ask you to float your arms up toward the ceiling? and lower the arms back down. So he's now able to lengthen the elbows and the tension of this movement is greatly reduced. He's able to access his core. He's also able to maintain a wide shoulder girdle position in the front while he's being supported in the back. Next, we're gonna look at side lying. Here we have Earl in side lying, which is a position we use a lot for working on the side body, particularly abduction of the hip. Earl is right now supported with a pillow and a balanced body uh, head pad. He is aligned as much as possible vertically through his ankles, knees, hips, ribs, shoulders, and ears. And Earl, I'm going to just ask you 
to get a little bit more length through your torso. Beautiful. And as he does that, there's more of a neutral position through the waist. What we're avoiding here is the collapse of the upper waist, allowing the ribs and the pelvis to come closer together. We want Earl to be able to access his hip abductors. So Earl, can you just float your left leg up toward the ceiling? And thank you, lower it back down. So what we notice is that he's able to maintain pelvic stability and trunk stability while he's doing that because we have his head supported in alignment with the rest of his spine, which helps to continue that balance support all the way down to the pelvis. I'm gonna take the head pillow away. Again, I'm not gonna let him go all the way down because that would be too much side bending for Earl's neck. But we're just gonna take that away. Notice now that his head is going into more of a right side bend. And Earl, can you lift that left leg up? Notice he's already starting to roll back into external rotation. And now that upper hip is coming even further back. So he's rolled into rotation, thank you very much, and lower the leg down. So he's not able to stabilize the pelvis nearly as well as when he's supported, and just float your head up for me when he's supported with his head in alignment with the rest of the spine and into the pelvis. So this starting position is really critical. What I might do with Earl is even give him a little bit of support between the knees with a little bean bag or something like that. When you're working with clients and students who have postural issues, it's really helpful to have a lot of props around so that you can grab something to help support them. So back here I have towels, I have a couple of small balls, I have a little bean bag, and I also have another shaped Pilates head support. So when you're working with anybody with postural issues, you want to make sure that you have all kinds of things that will help support them in an optimal position before they move. Next we're going to look at prone lying. Here we have Earl in prone, and as you can see we have a pillow underneath the lower leg. We have a small pillow underneath his chest, and then we have the little half roll underneath his head. One of the reasons why I've placed the pillow underneath his lower leg is to take some weight off the feet. Earl also has some issues with feet and toes, and if we were to take this pillow away, so Earl, I'm gonna remove the pillow, and then just lower your legs down. A Couple of things happen. First of all, we get, a, we get more tension in the lumbar spine, he also, because of sensitivity in his feet, is not going to allow his legs to go into an ideal starting position because he's feeling uncomfortable in his toes. So Earl, I'm going to let you bend your knees up and I'm going to put this back in and then lower your legs down. Thank you very much. And now he's supported underneath without having all of that weight of his leg going into his toes and his feet. He's going to be much more likely to be able to access his extensors without having that sense of pressure into his feet. Earl, can you lift your left leg toward the ceiling? So notice here, as he's lifting his leg, he's got a little bit of knee flexion, and thank you, lower it back down, but he's able to access his extensors all the way along this side. I'm gonna take the head and the chest pillow away and be really mean to you. And already you can see this strain in the neck. He's really not liking this position at all. Um, but I'm gonna ask him to lift that left leg again. And notice that we get a lot of tone all the way up into the head, the neck, the shoulder, lower that leg back down. So he's not accessing good hip extension. He's actually increasing tone all the way up the chain, which is not what we're looking for. Earl, I'm gonna put this back underneath your chest and lower your head back down. And he's already relaxed into the pillows and into the mat so that he's much better able to organize and access whatever extensor activation system that we're looking for. I hope that this has really helped you understand the importance of positioning, especially when dealing with mature clients or clients with postural deviations What's really important about looking at this is that we want to make, make sure that our students are able to access whatever it is we're asking them to access 
and not be distracted by uncomfortable positions, too much tone, um, or not be able to do what you're asking them to do because of pain or discomfort. Thank you very much for watching.